integration by substitution, which is also known as the U substitution method. The first problem is integral cosine fifth power 2x. So that is you evaluate cosine of 2x first and then you raise the whole answer to the fifth power and then you multiply sine of 2x dx so let's put the fifth power up because this is what I always do so I will just do integral and then I draw a square bracket I raise the fifth power in here and then inside the square bracket I write cosine of 2x and then times sine of 2x and then dx. The first step is you have to determine what u equals to if you let u equals to 2x uh, you can do that u equals to 2x is not wrong but letting u equals to 2x won't solve the problem and then you have to let u equals to cosine of 2x i am not saying that if you let u equals to sine of 2x is wrong is bad is wasting time when you are doing your practice you should try both so on your paper i want you to write what happened when you let u equals to sine of 2x because I know eventually that is not going to work but you earn this experience so when you solve this problem again on your homework quizzes and exam you won't waste your time anymore it, you can get the u right on the first try so we let u equals to cosine of 2x and then the u substitution the next step is you have to take derivative on both the derivative of u so the derivative of sine is equals to cosine is equals to negative sine so we have negative 2 sine of 2x how do we get a 2 in front of the sine because of the chain rule and then you have a dx and then you want to isolate the dx on one side you have 1 divided by negative 2 sine of 2x and then du equals to dx so these three steps are the basic move when you do u substitution uh, what is the purpose of doing this? The purpose of doing this is we are going to do a change of variable and then we will replace this dx to here, to that dx. This, this step is called change of variable. So let me put that in red. So this step is called change of variable. We are going to change this from x to u. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So the next part, what is the next step? The next step is you will be rewrite, rewriting the integral. So the, now the integral becomes you have integral and then you have u to the fifth because you let everything inside the square bracket equals to u. So you have u to the fifth and then you have sine of 2x. I know this is du, but how come we still have a dx? Wait for it. And then you multiply dx, which is in the yellow box, 1 divided by negative 2 sine of 2x dx. Now, what can be canceled? The answer is you can get rid of the sine of 2x and then the integral becomes becomes what? The integral becomes uh, you can take the, uh, the negative one half out or you can keep the negative one half in there u to the fifth du. Look how simple it is. You can just apply the power rule, right? So that is a negative one half. You have u to the sixth power, right? And then one over six. And then this is not a u problem. This is an x problem. Then you put the x back. So you have negative one over 12. And then u to the six, u to the six is equals to cosine, right? So you have a cosine six power and then 2x. Don't forget that this is an indefinite integral. You have to add a constant c at the end then this is the final answer all right so moving on let's take a look at the blue integral the blue integral is a definite integral so what to do when the integral is a definite integral so let's uh, switch to blue so you have a sign of 2x divided by square root of 2x if you let sine u equals to sine if you let u equals to the numerator uh, nice try but that is not going to help nice try but that doesn't solve the problem for you so the correct answer is you let u equals to square root of 2x 
usually you let u equals to what is in a parenthesis or in a or in a radical so this time we will just let u equals to square root of 2x now let me answer this question one more time what if i want to try u equals to 2x nice try but that is not going to work so when you're doing your practice when you do your homework it is good to try because you will earn this experience when you solve a similar problem again you know that it's not going to work so you won't waste time on it because like on a test and quizzes you will have a very limited time right okay Okay, let's get back to the business. So we have integral. I also need to emphasize that this is a 2x. I forgot to put that at the beginning. So since that is a dx, then this is x equals to 2 and x equals to 1 half. But normally we do not write that out. And then we have sine square root of 2x divided by square root of 2x and then dx and then you let u equals to square root of 2x and then the next step is you take the derivative so du is one half right and then you have a 2x negative one half and then by chain rule the derivative of 2x is equals to 2 and then dx the twos got cancelled you have a du equals to 1 divided by square root of 2x dx and then square root of 2x du equals to dx right and then you will do a change of variable so you will put this piece over here you will put this piece over here and that is called the change of variable and then the next question is how do i take care that u equals to two and u equals to one half the answer is this you have to find out what you uh the top the upper limit equals to when x equals to half and then same thing for the denominator so basically you plug in 2 to the u so you have 2 times 2 that is 4 root 4 is equals to 2 and then this is a 2 times 1 half this is a 1 which is equals to 1 and then when you write your integral you have this you have integral u equals to 1 and u equals to 2 you got that because we are doing a du integral so everything must be in u and then the top this is a sign of u divided by u right divided by u and then you multiply the dx which is in the yellow box that is the square root of 2x d, du so this is a du integral what is the problem in here that's why i make this problem for our discussion do you see that the square root of 2x cannot be cancelled so we cannot move on there is no way to move on because we have some x in the integral so how do we fix this problem keep in mind that we are not making any mistakes how do we fix the problem? This is not a mistake, but we will just have to rewrite something else. Do you see that you let the u in the denominator equals to the square root of 2x? So this time I'm not going to change this to u. I am going to re erase that and then put that what u equals to in x so which is the square root of 2x because that is what i let u be at the beginning right and then you get rid of them so you get rid of the square root and then do you see that all the x are gone so now you will have a simple integral integral u from 1 to 2 and then sine of u du and then the integral of sine is negative cosine u and then from 1 to 2 another question do we need to put this back to x the answer is no we do not put this back to x because all you have to do is you substitute and then you use the fundamental theorem of calculus that brings you to the answer so that is equals to negative cosine of 2 and then minus negative cosine of 1 and then what is that equal to uh, i will just i will just keep i will just keep everything so I will just keep um I will just keep you I will just keep this. I will just keep negative cosine of two minus minus becomes a plus and then cosine of one. There is no plus C because this is a definite integral. So this is already the final answer. Okay. Uh how about approximation? Read the problem very carefully. I don't think the when you are doing homework either on paper or online i don't think they let you use decimal because if they let you use decimal you can just do this on your calculator so you can kind of like cheat on the problem uh, which is something they they don't want you to do 
when I put this on a test, I will ask all of my students to report the exact answer. If I see a decimal, I will just take many, many points off. All right, so we solved two problems. So now you know how to handle when you apply U substitution, what to do when you have an indefinite integral, and then what to do when you have a definite integral. So now let's take care of the rest of the three problems. So we have a tangent, and then a tangent, and then a tangent a power. Let's do that. They are not tough. Let's do that. So the next problem is you have an integral of tangent, right? So integral of tangent, and then you have 2 plus theta, d theta. And then this one, if you let u equals to 2 plus theta, there is nothing you can do. That means you have to rewrite the integral to what? Tangent is equals to sine divided by cosine. So we have sine of 2 plus theta divided by cosine 2 plus theta, and then you have a d theta. And then this time, I am going to let u equals to cosine of 2 plus theta. So whenever you have a fraction like this, we always let u equals to the denominator. Can we let u equals to the numerator? Uh, you can try, but that is not going to work. On Again, on your homework, feel free to try, feel free to, you know, earn some experience of what is working and what is not. So when you do your quizzes and exam, you can get the U right on the first attempt. DU equals to negative cosine and then 2 plus theta. And then the derivative of 2 plus theta is 1. So there is no need to put anything in front of the cosine. And then you have 1 divided by the whole thing. So 1 divided by negative cosine of 2 plus theta du equals to d theta. All right, so can we get rid of something? Yep, we can get rid of something after the change of variable. So let's do a change of variable. So we are going to replace this d theta over here. And then what would you get? So you will get integral Okay, let's put this like right here. So that becomes, you will have an integral sine of 2 plus theta divided by, so you usually let that equals to u, right? Let's put that there. And then you multiply and then you multiply, oh ha, you might already figure out this problem because I was thinking, how come the sine cannot be canceled, huh? Here, you know what? The derivative of cosine, I said sine, right? I remember I said sine, but I wrote cosine, huh? Sine, okay. I did everything right, so that's why I'm, I'm able to figure out the mistake by myself. So this is a sine, because I was thinking, ah, oh, here. Like if you put a cos cosine in there, nothing can be canceled. So that's how I found this problem. So we have negative sine and then two plus theta. This is a one and then du. Okay, so what can be canceled? This sine and this sine is gone. Don't forget that there is a negative one. So you have a negative one integral one over u du. Is this a power rule? Absolutely not. This is a ln. So this is a negative ln absolute value of u, which is you put the u back. So you have a negative ln absolute value of cosine two plus theta close the absolute value and then plus c. Is the absolute value optional? The answer is no, because ln of negative is undefined. It can cosine 2 plus theta be negative. You should check out the graph, cosine 2 plus theta, the plus 2, just shift the graph of cosine. You know what the graph of cosine is, right? Just in your mind, graph the cosine really quick from zero, x from 0 to 2 pi. So just do one period for me. So can you do that in your mind? the graph of cosine from 0 to 2 pi, so you have some sort of like an upside down parabola, right? So that is between y equals to 1 and y equals to negative 1. When you add a 2 inside the parentheses, you will just shift that like upside down parabola two units to the left. So you still have some curve below the x-axis, so there, that means cosine of 2 plus theta can be negative, so therefore the absolute value is required. So what if the function inside the absolute value is positive? So let's say x squared 
or x squared plus one, then you can eliminate the absolute value. So when you do your homework, if you, especially online, if you miss the absolute value, the problem will just take your answer as in as an incorrect answer. You don't get a single point. Uh, how do I know? Because I lost points on on this. I still remember that problem. I was doing the my homework in a computer lab. I was I checked the problem twenty times and and at the end of the day, I spent all of my attempt and I find out that the problem is absolute value. I learned my lesson. Okay, that is number three. So number four, you have a similar problem. Uh, what, what color did I use? I use yellow, right? Okay, let's use yellow. So the next one is integral, tangent of uh, 3x dx. Same thing, this one you will have to change the tangent to a sine divided by cosine. Uh, the noise you hear is, uh, I've just flipped a page on my notes. So sine of 3x divided by cosine of 3x dx and then you usually let u be the denominator. If you let u equals to 3x, that doesn't do anything. So u equals to cosine of 3x and then du equals to negative sine, negative sine of 3x by chain rule. There is a 3 in front and then you have the divided by that. So negative 1, ne 1 divided by negative 3 sine of 3x du equals to dx. So now we do a change of variable. We will put this dx over to that dx. And then you have integral sine of 3x divided by u, right? And then you have c. So this time I, I got it right. So negative 3 sine of 3x du. That works like a charm, right? That works out like a charm. So sine of 3x, sine of 3x is gone. Then we have a negative one third integral 1 over u du, and that is an ln. So you have negative 1 third ln absolute value of u, right? So absolute value of u, and then plus c, and then this is a cosine 3x. Uh, cosine 3x, you still have some, uh, some curve below the x-axis, so the absolute value is required. All right, it is Require so this is the final answer and let's move on to the last one the last one i use what color i use a purple okay let's use purple then the last one we have a uh, integral tangent a power theta divided by cosine square theta d theta i am sure that your first impression is you think this is tough because of the a power right okay don't worry about that. So you let u equals to what? This time we are going to let u equals to tangent. So we are going to let u equals to tangent of theta. By the way, this is the same thing as tangent theta. And then you raise the whole thing to the a power and then divide it by cosine square. You can just keep the two in there for the cosine. And then du equals to the derivative of tangent is secant square. And then uh, secant square is the same thing as one divided by cosine. Is everything is in square, and then you put the cosine to the other side, so you have cosine square theta du equals to d theta. And then we do a change of variable, and then we put this d theta over actually is over there. And then what do you see? You can see that the cosine will be cancelled, right? And then as a result, you have integral u to the eighth power divided by cosine square, multiply cosine square, and then du. All right, so the cosine square got cancelled. We are happy. We are only integrating the u to the eighth power, which is u to the ninth power, one over nine, right? And then what is that equal to? The u is a tangent, so you have one over nine tangent. Uh, I maybe your instructor will be happier if you keep the 9 in there and then plus C there we go oh how do you know this is the right answer easy simply take the derivative of your answer and then you will be able to get back to the integral all right so that is the fifth five integrals for u substitution if you like the way I teach this give me a thumbs up a subscribe and I will catch you all in the next video, signing off.